feel like I'm at a ball game. Thank you, David. Good morning, Glenmore Church. Peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to, uh, to this wonderful Sunday in Advent. We're here together. It's warm. We'll close the door in a few minutes, but uh, we have stragglers here. If you're visiting here, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Dan Hepner. I'm the pastor here. Today, we're in the midst of, uh, again, wondering. This is a uh, a sermon series through Advent about wonder. Today it's about doubt, and we're reading and we're studying from, from John the Baptist. John's in prison, and he is starting to have doubts in his mind, in his heart, as to who this Jesus was. And we have doubts, and we fight doubt. We fight doubt every day. So from this lesson, from the, from the power of, uh, of Matthew's gospel, uh, we're going to hear about John's doubt and about the resolution to that doubt. So in the meantime, we can sing and we can praise God and we can praise Him for this Advent season and this Christmas tide season. So why don't you sing along with us here? Welcome to worship. Thank you for coming. child is, is Jesus, and we fight. It doesn't matter if it's Advent or in the middle of the year, in, the, in June or July, we fight this doubt that's in our hearts and our minds. Is Jesus truly, truly that sovereign God in my life? We doubt that. So did John the Baptist in prison. So entrapped in that uh, incarceration, he even doubted. So we're going to learn from that, from Matthew's gospel. Let's continue in worship. No reputation, no state fair 
could have new life. Let's stand. Let's greet our neighbor saying, peace of the Lord God be with you. Welcome to worship. Peace of the Lord be with you. Stay out of Williamsport. <laughs> I said, stay out of Williamsport. <laughs> Kabish. Very nice ladies, very nice. I'm sorry I didn't feel as much as I could. I have so much on my mind right now. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. Welcome, welcome friends. Welcome to uh, this hour of worship, this third Sunday in Advent with this powerful message uh, from the gospel uh, according to Matthew on doubt. But before we do that, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, some things that are going on in the life of this church. I wanted to jump down to... Uh, a great success yesterday with our cookie walk. Uh, I don't know what we reaped in terms of uh, roof funding, but uh, there was a lot of money in that, uh, in that little uh, cash register yesterday. So thank you for coming. It really didn't last all that long. We had lines out the door here, and uh, it was wonderful. I mean, it extended through probably the 1 o'clock hour, but, uh, man, those cookies were flying out of here. Last night we had a beautiful... Uh, Pennsylvania Flute Choir Christmas uh, concert, uh, 11 flutes, 11-piece uh, flautists that were just absolutely magnificent. We had 66 people here, and uh, we collected uh, probably over $400. So uh, that also will go to our, our roof funding project. So we, we praise God. We praise God for that. Remember, Reads Across America is next Saturday um, at noon. Uh, we'll have worship here, then we'll uh, go outside and we'll lay the wreaths on uh, these wonderful gravesides and these saints who have fought uh, for us and battled for our freedom. Uh, again, if you're visiting today, I welcome you in the name of, of Jesus. You know about our midweek Bible studies, Mike's on Wednesday evenings, and Donna and Deb's on Tuesday afternoon at, uh, at 1 o'clock. Uh, the flowers on the altar today are in memory of loved ones given by Linda and Chuck. They will be lighting the Advent uh, candles here uh, in a moment, and um, let, me, let me read something that um, I wrote and I had forgotten, but I, I wanted to uh, kind of reprise this. It's in your, it's in your bulletin. It's about uh, year-end giving. John Wesley, who's the founder of Methodism, wrote this. He said, when the possessor of heaven and earth brought you into being and placed you in this world, he placed you here not as an owner, but as a steward. And I wanted to remind you guys, at least in print, that we're approaching the end of our calendar year and our fiscal year at Glenmore. Uh, we have had a busy and exceptionally rich year and are truly blessed by God. You've shown your love for our Lord Jesus once again, friends, with, with your faithful giving and support of this church. First and foremost, our roof funding project continues in 23. We've collected 
almost $56,000 towards uh, repaying our roof debt collected. That was collected 55 through November, but I think we're uh, just south of, of 56 now. We, we had some wonderful gifts here do, during the week in that little church, and uh, just amazing. So thank you, uh, thank you, uh, from the bottom of my heart for that. And as we do, we remember that our, our stewardship, um, by the way, our church budget and our giving is, has been faithful and it has been steady as well. So I'm just so grateful. Um, I won't read the rest of this, but uh, we have these God-given goals that we set. Let's, let's end our year, this year end. You know, we give year end giving uh, to finish our year. Let's finish strong and confident, friends, in our future. Confident always in our future. So uh, with that being said, let me invite uh, Chuck and Linda up. I'm going to light these first two. Um, I guess I'll light everything while I'm at it. So uh, 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 just bear with me a second. We'll just, we'll just do that. The light is in the room. The light of the world is here. And I will light two. And you'll light the third. I'll give that to you for your trust. And uh, let's join Chuck and Linda in this, uh, in this liturgy. Today is the third Sunday of the Advent season. So come and worship the Lord. We're happy for those who place their hope in the Lord God. We will worship the Lord for happy those who call us in the God of Jacob. The Lord made heaven and earth. The Lord will reign forever. And is the one that will keep us from falling and will make us stand without blemish and in the presence of his rejoicing. Mm. We light this candle now faithfully waiting, watching, and wonder for Jesus. Let us never do so as we anticipate Jesus coming this advent season. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's tricky. I'll do it. We shall light it together. Can I say amen? Amen. Let's rise for the uh, call to worship found in your bulletin, friends. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletins. Brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. We will be patient in our waiting. We will take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. Like Job, a man of great endurance, you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. The Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. We will be patient in our waiting. We will take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Let's remain standing. Let's sing our first hymn, beautiful hymn, All Earth is Waiting, number 210. Actually, we've made a... 454. 454, I know. We made a change. Yes, we made a change. Turn to 454. It's even a more beautiful hymn than 210. 454. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth that sendeth clear. 
And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Beautifully sung. You may be seated. been entering into these opening prayers, and uh, I'd like you to join me in this. It's found in your bulletin. Pray with me today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we confess that often we are impatient. We fail to sense your promptings and your guiding us through our lives. We complain about the direction of our lives, but sometimes fail to live by your word. We complain about the world and the suffering, but that's all we do. Help us trust in you completely and your holy word, believing that it is not conscience, but you, holy Lord, that is speaking to our hearts. Help us trust in you, believing that justice and righteousness will eventually prevail and that you will guide us into a more holy life, never losing hope as we anticipate your coming this Advent season. In Jesus' name, we make our prayer. Amen and amen. I'll ask our ushers to uh, come forward, move amongst us for this morning's offering and invite our our chancel choir up to uh, illuminate our hearts with this offertory anthem. Beep, beep. (laughs) A winter night, a winter chill, wind and cold are bitter still. Snow drift high and frost below, icy lane and moon and shadow. December night, December chill, wind and cold are bitter still. Child is born, the angels call, peace, goodwill to all. In the purest white of snowfall, a sign of hope comes quietly. Voices and all to come and see.
Father, we are faithful stewards, Lord. Your bounty, your manna is great. Help this manna, Lord, to further your kingdom here at Glenmore Church and in this community and in the world, Father. We ask a blessing, a blessing this Advent season on the giver and the giver and the hand that gave it. We pray all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, choir. Beautifully done. Thank you, David. Today's scripture reading is Matthew 11, 2 through 11, and can be found on page 844 of your pew Bible. Please follow the law. Now when John heard in a prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you he who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to behold? A reed shaken by the wind? Why then did you go out? To see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, those who wear soft raiment are in king's houses. Why then did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Thank you, Mike. The great Reverend Donald Barnhouse, who shepherded 10th Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia from 1927 until his death in 1960 and founder of the Bible Study Hour, on the radio, used to hold an open forum in his church on Sunday evenings with just a, a microphone and a Bible in his hand. He would answer questions from the congregation, which was usually packed with students and young intellectuals as well as people from the church. One young man, one evening, stood up in the balcony and said, I'd like to know, Dr. Barnhouse, how those children of Israel could walk around the wilderness for 40 years and their shoes never wear out and their clothes never wear out. Barnhouse looked at him, blinked a time or two, and said, God... God, the young man up there said, oh, now I understand, and sat down. Barnhouse said, no, you don't, son. Nobody understands. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. When I was a little boy, I would go upstairs, which I really didn't like to do because for years, our second floor was uninsulated. <laughs> it was either cold or hot, depending on the season, but I, I did anyway when I wanted to look at pictures of my dad when he was young. 
when he was in the United States Navy, when he married my mother, when he was daddy to my brother Jim and I. My dad, as you know, was just 33 years old when he died of a malignant brain tumor. I would sit in that cold or hot storage closet upstairs and look at black and white pictures for an hour or more at a sitting, staring at his face, the clothes he wore, the expressions on his face as he posed for pictures or was captured in a picture somewhere. My mom was a pretty decent photographer in those days and very beautiful in those pictures. I remember one day coming downstairs after looking at pictures for a while with one of Daddy, I think, on their wedding day. He was dressed in a, in a gray suit. His hair was so neatly combed, skinny tie that looked like, like he was really sharp, looked like 007, looked like James Bond. I wasn't real conscious of my mother's state of mind when I was young about Daddy. She was just 28 when my dad died, but I showed her this picture and remember saying to her something like, I wish, I wish Daddy would step out of that picture and be with us tonight. And I remember my mom walking over to me and just holding me tight. You know, probably most of if not all of us have felt like that in our lives at some point in time, that someone we loved dearly in our hearts could somehow be with us again for a time, <laughs> separated by miles, perhaps, or by death. Little boys and little girls, older adults of all kinds, expressing a deep yearning of the human heart, trying to understand what God is up to, or why God did this, or allowed that, or maybe even that God, our heavenly parent and father, would somehow come and be with us in a real and tangible and vital way. These days, people everywhere are seeking God. You may not believe that given the state of affairs with matters of faith and the reported fading following of Jesus Christ. You may not know that. But for some, they are not seeking God in the name of Jesus Christ. They are looking for God in nature or practicing meditation or spiritual disciplines. They're reading religious and personal growth books, looking for God online, perhaps, in cults, uh, in tribes, and in the clouds, literally. Everywhere but the Bible, the words of God, everywhere but Scripture. For all the searching for God that we do, all the debate about joy and fulfillment and contentment and peace for our lives, most are missing the New Testament's obvious point, that God is already with us, that God has made God's presence known in the world through the coming of Jesus Christ, and God continues to reveal himself through creative, life-giving activity in our midst. Where are you, God? Are you there? Will you return? I'm being distracted by all this other information, God, now in my life for all of you these days that are looking for God and investing a bunch of time and money and energy in the search for spiritual peace and happiness. Well, I have news for you. I have good news. God can be found. He can be found. John the Baptist, as we have read here this morning, has been placed in prison by King Herod. Why? Because of what he is professing and teaching to the people. He landed there also because Herod was married 
and married his own sister-in-law, and John publicly expressed disapproval of Herod's flagrant sin. That information is found in Matthew 14, by the way. But be that as it may, the rumor is that there is this guy going around the area preaching and teaching about God's promised Messiah. Before prison, John was out there telling people to prepare the way. You heard that last week. Prepare the way for the coming of the anointed one of God. From what he understood of the word of God, he was maxing out all his energy for this message. But once incarcerated, John began to have some doubts about whether Jesus really was the Messiah. John's sermons, as you know, were that of a judgmental role that he, John, was anticipating. But instead, here comes Jesus, friends, here he comes, gentle and kind. A man who spends much more time eating with tax collectors and sinners than condemning them. This is a man who does not mind being with criminals not scolding them, being with children, old people, the powerless, as well as the influential, the power brokers and the rich and affluent. No problem with any of these people. John, sitting in the, in the can now, sends word to Jesus asking, are you really the one who is to come or should we be looking for someone else? If Jesus was one of those controlling type personalities and commanded our complete attention, a guy who always put people in their place and stuck it to folks, there would have been no need for the Baptist question. Had Jesus kind of deputized, perhaps, John the Baptist, gave him a, a uniform and a badge or a title like assistant to the Messiah? John would probably not have had a second thought about whether he was the one. Think of this, though. Think of this. John sees Jesus taking a soft line on sin and wicked people, fraudulent politicians and pundits, all at the same time he, John, sits in the county jail for what? For offensive preaching and espousing some prophecy and his open criticism of everything and almost everybody. He is, no doubt, confused. <laughs> confused. He expected Jesus to, to just walk into his wake and pick up where he left off. Hey, man, John remarks, Jesus is not fulfilling my expectations. I can hear him saying that. Is he really the Messiah? John thinks to himself, have I put my hope in the wrong person? Is the person I look at really the Messiah? Is he God? You may have heard this story before. R.C. Sproul in his book, Pleasing God, tells the story of the burglar who was stalking the neighborhood watching for homes left unguarded by people leaving on vacation. Maybe you've heard this. He watched as a, a family loaded their suitcases into their car and drove away for vacation. Well, he waited until dark and then approached the front door and rang the bell. No answer. The burglar then neatly picked the lock and let himself in. He called into the darkness is anybody home? He was stunned when he heard a voice in reply. I see you, and Jesus sees you. <laughs> Terrified, the burglar called out again, Who's there? Again, the voice came back. I see you, and Jesus sees you. The burglar then switched on the flashlight aimed it in the direction of the voice. 
He was instantly relieved when, he's, when his light revealed a caged parrot reciting the refrain, I see you and Jesus sees you. The burglar laughed out loud and switched on the lights in the room. Then he saw it. Beneath the parrot's cage was a huge Doberman pincher. <laughs> then the parrot said, attack, Jesus, attack. <laughs> if we can be honest with ourselves for a minute here, We've all thought the same things at times and admit that there have been points and times in our lives we have questioned our religious convictions. It's really true. Are we foolish to believe, <laughs> to believe in God? Like the man who went up to clean his chimney slipped and started to slide down the roof only to grab onto a little metal rain gutter that went around the eaves of the house. He held on and screamed, isn't there anybody up there who can help me? And a voice from heaven came, I can help you. Well, what shall I do? The man cried out, let go and I'll catch you. The voice replied, the man then said, is there anybody else up there who can help me? <laughs> At Advent, we hear about the coming of Jesus, the angel's message of, of peace on earth, yet we are probably no closer to world peace now than we ever have been. We read, Jesus restored sight to the blind, made the lame man walk, healed the sick, allowed the deaf to hear, yet disease still runs rampant in our world. Jesus preached the good news to the poor and the hungry. Yet everywhere we look, we see hungry people, needy, desperate people, lonely, disposed. We see the the sunshine every day on some, but there is a cloud over on so much of our day and our world, we say. Worries, cares, problems weigh us down. We, we try to believe and we try to stay faithful, but it gets heavy sometimes, doesn't it? Sometimes the discouragement gets such that we wonder if there really is purpose to our struggles, or are we just kidding ourselves? Like John, not sure Jesus is the one. Tolstoy's story of Martin the Cobbler, the old man who is promised a visit by Christ himself, yet encounters only ordinary people with common, ordinary problems from morning until night. That is our story, isn't it? Tolstoy. Our time is spent looking for the big splash, the, the spectacular, overwhelming evidence of the presence of Almighty God, only to discover in retrospect that God appears, friends, in the quiet. God appears in the ordinary, even the obscure places of our lives when we least Expect him. God comes, as Martin the cobbler learned, through the kind word. God comes, as the cobbler says, of the understanding heart, the quiet sharing of a good deed done in simplicity and love. We expect God to come in a big way. If we don't, we doubt. However, we discover that God is already present in so many ways that we sometimes fail to recognize and do not grasp until after the fact. Think about that. Think about this for a moment. We are desperate and need of God's guidance through the moral demise we see of our country and our world today. But the evangelical response to most of this has been, well, we see divorce, 
So we preach against divorce, or we see alcoholism and rampant drug use, so we preach against excessive alcohol use and rail against drug abuse. That's what we preach. How's that working these days? Preaching morality has never worked, never will. That is the moralist viewpoint. It is not proclaiming the gospel, however. And equally wrong, friends, equally wrong and devastating is whitewashing sin. Let me make that perfectly clear. The only balancing hope we have is stated in Galatians 5. Paul says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants. He continues, and the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, Paul says, you are not under obligation to their law of Moses. End quote. Where can I find God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If I'm looking through my doubt, only I will wonder forever. If I'm looking for a, a big lightning bolt or heaven opening up, I might go on my whole life without finding Jesus. But if I look in the common, ordinary places, an old, dusty closet, that old, dusty black and white pictures, I will see the Lord God at work almost every time I take the time to look. My dad, I know now, is with mom and is sealed for all eternity in the heavenly realm of beauty and magnificence with Jesus and the saints. Until I had eyes to see and ears to hear, they were nothing more than pictures of a day gone by. Nothing more. Now I know that someday I will be with them, Daddy and Mom and Jesus, in paradise. No more doubts. Amen. So we come to a time of prayer, and this is really the, my most favorite time where we ask God, we petition God in a corporate way, in a profound way, in an individual way. So as we careen into Christmas and negotiate Advent, what do we pray for today? What are the needs that are on our hearts? Who do we pray for? What is, what's worthy of prayer? To, everything's worthy of prayer, but what do you want to pray for today? God is good. He is here. Jesus said, uh, when two and three are gathered, I'm in your midst. We just, we got to get America to buy that. We got to buy that. What do we pray for today? as we continue in this wonderful Advent season. Vanessa? I would just like to have everyone pray for healing and strength this holiday season. I think everybody needs a little extra support and love in every direction. Amen. We pray and we, we see miracles in this church. 
countless miracles that are in our midst. We just tend to see them sometimes after the fact. Linda? I delivered the uh, gifts to the cops and home this past week, and they're very thankful for all of the uh, presents that were donated by the church. So thank you, everyone, for you. your help in, in making that happen. Thank you. Thank you. So many people come through the week here, and Robin is so instrumental with others in taking things. I, I'm in my office most of the day, but it's just a, such a marvelous, marvelous uh, week as people come in and out of this church delivering uh, love, and uh, we appreciate we appreciate it. Others? John? Yeah, I have two things. Our oldest grandson graduates from Penn State. Oh, next, my gosh. This coming Saturday. You're kidding me. And uh, so we're very proud of him. He has employment. Okay. Uh, he's good. He's launching. Uh, and the second, so I lift him up in prayer. And also, uh, for people of the Ukraine, uh, I know Diane and I had the the blessing really of, of culling through an awful lot of our hats and gloves and scarves which went out to the, mm. to the church to go over there. So prayers for the people of Ukraine who Amen. are having a cold winter. Amen. Thank you, John. And that four years went very, very quickly, I may add. Holy cow. We were just down at the Green Street Grill talking about he was on his way. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for those uh, thoughtful prayers. Mary, this is wonderful. Dan and the congregation of Glenn White, so thank you for the prayers that you offered for me with my back surgery. I'm hanging in there. I'm determined. <laughs> but thank you for your prayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This woman comes to church despite uh, all that. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Wonderful. And the girls, Gigi. Um, my good friend, Cara, got through her really, um, her test this week for her adrenal glands down at Penn Medicine, and she's making some headway, and we're just so thankful. But I do, I do ask you and implore you to keep praying for Cara and for a diagnosis and for some progress in healing. It's just been way too long for Amen. someone to not feel well for months. So Amen. we just, but they do feel the Lord, and they do feel prayer. So thank you for praying for my friend, Cara. Yeah, keep praying. And for Phil, who's here faithfully every Sunday. Thank you, Philip. Marcia. Uh, I'd ask for prayers for my college roommate. I just found out she's on her third bout with cancer. Pray for healing. Um, healing can take many forms. Um, pray for Mary Jane and her family. Amen. Amen. Got a lot of things licked, but we can't wrap our arms around certain cancer, but it's coming. It's in our midst. We celebrate it. Thank you for these prayers, and uh, what a beautiful outpouring today. Thank you. I don't know what the count is today. John will count, but thank you for coming to worship today and, and being a part of this congregation. Let's pray together. And Father, you are our focus you, Lord, are our strength and our shield and our refuge, God. And we, we believe, Lord, but uh, as Paul said, Lord, forgive me in my doubt. Forgive me, Lord, when I get to that place where I start to slip and I start to doubt. Lord, lift me up. Make me new. Make me whole. I'm not looking for spectacular. I'm not looking for the bright lights, Lord. I'm looking for and sensing your voice, your prompting in the quiet, in the ordinary times with ordinary people, in kindness and hope and prayer. God, we lift these petitions up, uh, uh, a desperate people in the Ukraine for young men that are uh, graduating from college, and now they're super smart, Lord, and they're out in the world. But uh, we pray for this young man. We pray for his first job. We pray for uh, quick learnings, not so much of the job, Lord, but of, of life. We thank you that he came from a great family, God. 
We pray for college roommates, Lord. We still love those people despite years and years of not seeing them, Lord. Distance, yet we still love and we pray. The distance will not keep us from praying contemplatively, Lord. So we pray for that. For Cara, for healing, for a diagnosis, Lord, for uh, a way to treat a condition, Lord, and for the, uh, um, the, the new day, the new dawn in Cara's life, for, for, uh, for Phil, for, for patience, for power. Lord, we, we thank you, Father, for strength that comes with community, strength that comes with husbands and wives, strength that comes with friends. Lord, we, we're grateful for that. Grateful for the church, Lord. Grateful for a, a place to come and, and uh, after surgery and, and be with friends and, 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 and praise you, Father, for, for healing. We thank you, God, for Advent. We thank you for the Christmas tide season, Lord. We thank you for redemption, for forgiveness, for the cross, for the blood, and for eternal life, something that uh, one day, Lord, we'll be breathless for. So, God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his birth. We thank you for, for Mary, Lord, for her courage and her journey, for Joseph, Lord, and his steadfastness. We thank you, God, for prayer. We thank you, God, that you taught us to pray when nothing else was in our heads, Lord, that we were sitting in a pew and lost and confused, yet you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen, amen. Before we stand, I'm reminding my nominating committee, we have a meeting right after church at 11.15. We're gonna meet downstairs. Nominating committee at 11.15. Let's stand and let's sing our last uh, hymn number 246, Joy to the World. Let's sing out. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive. Nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all his songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as a curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. One more. He ruled the world in truth and grace and makes the nations prove. And wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they put a, a candle under a basket. They put it on a lampstand where it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men and women and children that they will see your good works and then God will be glorified. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.